Okay, let's analyze this circuit to make sure that it is in fact an integrator circuit. Okay, we have a capacitor C here, and then uh, we have uh, I of R. I of R is the current that flows to that resistor. Okay, I of R, I sub R, must be also the current that flows through I sub C. Okay, so by now we become a pro. We don't even have to think very much. We say that I of R and I of C are the same thing. Okay? And then I of C must be equal to C V0 minus V0 Vt. This is a voltage drop across the capacitors. This is zero volt here. This is V minus V plus. And this must be true. I sub C must be C V naught dt. Does anybody have any problem with this equation as of this point? I'm just applying the IV relationship for the capacitor on the top circuit and claiming that this voltage drop is just zero volt minus V naught. Okay? And then that must be I sub C. I sub C must be the same as I sub R. Okay. And hence this must be just minus C V naught Vt. But this I sub R is also equal to V sub S divided by R. Okay. V sub S divided by R must be I sub R. Hence I have now a relationship between V naught and V S. Okay. So I have the fact that V as T must be equal to minus RC V V naught V T. But I want to turn this around so that V out becomes the output, V S becomes the input. So I turn this into an integration. So if I turn this into an integration, I just integrate that equation, I get V naught of t, the output signal, is equal to v naught at t0, okay, minus 1 over rc t naught to t vs of tau d tau. Remember that tau is just a dummy variable of integration, okay? So this is an off amp integrator circuit. Are there any questions regarding this? Okay. Yes? Um, it's not regarding that, but we said the capacitors, uh, the voltage can't jump, so for uh, inductors, the current can't jump. The current can jump. Very good. Very good. Okay. The current can the voltage can't jump because if there's any any current that looks like this for the inductor. Okay, if you differentiate it, this jump is going to give you something very, very large. Okay, the I the T will be something finite and then suddenly something goes to infinity, something finite. And this is not possible because this is finite. I'm driving this system with a finite voltage. So there cannot be infinity in my system. So currents can't jump. Okay. So I should say inductor currents, inductor current can't jump. Okay? Those are the two things that you should remember. So let's look at the other possibilities that we might have. That is, uh, what happens if I use an inductor to do an op-amp integrator instead? <coughs> okay, if I look at that, then the circuit will look something like this. Vs of t is somewhere over here. I have an inductor, and then I have a feedback resistor. And it looks something like this. This is R. 
this is d out of t, and this is minus, this is plus, this is L, and this is grounded, this is grounded. And then if I analyze this thing, uh, if I call this current to be I, okay, then I know that uh, the voltage drop across this thing here is going to be Vs because V minus is going to be zero, V plus is going to be zero. So I have immediately the fact that this voltage drop, this source voltage is going to drop completely across the inductor, this L, Vi, Vt. Okay, if I just look at that part of the circuit. Okay, and most of this I is going to veer itself and go upward. Okay, this I is going to be there as well. And then I know that uh, a minus V naught must be I R. Okay, minus V naught is going to be I R. And then if I combine these two equations, okay, combine these two equations, then I would have uh, L the V naught V T times one over R is equal to Vs, okay? What I do in this case is to replace uh, I, okay, from this equation I get I is to the minus V naught over R, and I substitute I in there, I get minus L over R, V V naught V T, okay? And then from that equation, I get this bottom equation over here. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is to make V out into an output, make Vs into an input. I convert this by integration. That must be real easy stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of you are walking out of the classroom now. But, uh, so I integrate this equation. <coughs> so if I integrate this equation, I get uh, V naught of T must be equal to V naught of T zero minus R over L T zero to T, V S of T, or the tau. And that gives me the integration relationship between the output voltage and the input source voltage, Vs of t. Okay. So are there any questions so far regarding this? Okay, if there are no questions, let me just do some examples uh, in the textbook. And if I look at example 3.7, I have about five minutes left. I have a I of T that looks something like this. Okay. And this current is going to pass through an inductor. Well, this current is going to pass through a capacitor. Okay. And how would the how would the voltage look like? Okay. How would the voltage look like? So I know that for a capacitor, I is going to see the V B T, right? I is going to see the V B T. Hence, I know that uh, V T must be equal to V of T zero plus one over C T zero to T uh, I of tau V tau. Okay, I just integrate the equation. I get this other equation. Okay? So, there was no current. There was no current I of T 
and let's assume that t0 is equal to 0. So for t less than 0, there's no current. i of t is equal to 0. So nothing contributes from this thing if t is less than 0. And let, let's assume that v of e of 0, which is v of 0, is equal to 0. The initial voltage is equal to 0. Okay? So I know that before anything happens, the voltage here must be 0. Okay. And then if I go beyond t is equal to 0, I'm going to integrate this right. I'm, not, I'm going to integrate this box function, the box function. If you integrate it, what do I get over here? If I integrate this, if I integrate it pictorially in my mind. 1 by c. A what? 1 by c. 1 by c? Yeah. What is 1 by c? Uh, OK, uh, so the. It, it, yeah, so the, so the integral would be the area of the curve, which is 1 in this case. No, no, no. I'm actually integrating bit by bit. I'm integrating as I move my t. Oh. OK, what do I get over there? Positive slope. A positive slope, very good. What we call a ramp function in engineering. As I integrate, I'll pick up area under this box, right? Integral from here to here is zero. Integral from here to here is something. Integral from here to here, I get more and more and more. So I get a ramp function. And after I pass one second, I have nothing else to pick up. OK? What happens to that curve after one second? It stays constant, right? There's nothing else to pick up in this integral. It just stay like that. Okay, and that was the value you were thinking about over here. Okay? But in between there was a ramp function that ramps up and meet the constant value. So this is what happens if you were to look at an integrated circuit. I have three minutes left. And if I have three minutes left, what would you like to do? Well, let me just ask you a simple question. If I have a step function, a unit step function that I hear you have learned about in some other courses, if I were to integrate this function, okay, if I were to integrate this function, what do I get? I get zero, and what do I get? A straight line, okay, simple as that. Uh, integration of a set function is a ramp function. This is called a ramp. A ramp function. Okay. What is the differentiation of a set function? Something I just told you a while back. A delta function. You just go to infinity at this point. Okay. It's another thing that you can learn. So if I have a delta function, if I integrate this, what do I get? A constant. A constant, very good. I will just get this back. Differentiation of this gives me a delta function. The integration of this gives me back a step function. Because those are some of the things in electrical engineering that you should commit to memory. OK, then there are lots of fun. OK? I guess we'll stop here, since I don't have much time left.